What's up, y'all? Trey B. Dippin' in the building. You know what time it is. I almost bust myself in the head with the camera. Mm. Would've been bleeding. So anyway, what we have here today is an episode of the Ultra Instinct Loop. So UPS man just got here and uh, got a little package, man. And uh, kind of goes with uh, something I should have ordered the first time. But we're gonna open this box and see what it is. So we're also gonna play a little game of a uh, little game of what's in that box. What's in that box, player? Did you guess yet? What about that? Did you guess yet? Hey, you're like, what's that? This here, my friend, is my new fan shroud and fan to go with my brand new tucked radiator. <laughs> Oh, it looks like an intercooler, right? No, it's not. It's a tucked radiator. This particular one, see how thick that is, right? This particular one is from the Crafty Boys at. This one is from Boys at Chase Bays. So, if by the end of this tutorial slash video if you want to order one of these um, I may or may not have a discount code in the description you have to scroll down and see um, and also I'll have a link to this exact radiator so with that being said first thing you're gonna want to do is admire this joint it's I mean the craft the, the craftsmanship here is is nice um, obviously this is gonna I'm gonna turn this up like this is gonna be the top part. Um, obviously, it had to be turned like that to fit the box. But um, all the welds are pretty clean. Um, you can tell that, I mean, this thing is thick, man. I don't know how much fluid it's rated to hold, but I definitely think this is gonna definitely solve my uh, overheating issues, for sure. So, after you admire this piece, First thing you want to do is pretty much disassemble the entire front end. So, I got the, the, pretty much the whole front end is, is broken down. Probably took me like 30 minutes to do everything, taking my time. But um, once you get everything taken apart, this is where you want to take your tucked radiator and basically mock it up to see what you're going to have to cut. In most cases, nine times out of 10, especially for Hondas, 
I'm gonna have to cut this uh, like center support out, which I'll give you a close up of that. You're basically gonna have to cut. Oh, wait a minute. So you're basically gonna have to cut this in some fashion. Um, obviously, with this car, it, it holds the hood latch, um, so I can't cut it all the way off, which I wouldn't want to do that anyway. But I'm probably gonna have to cut it pretty much near all the way up to the top right here, um, and then find a way to fabricate it in there. So this is the the part where you kind of have to visualize how you want it and go from there. I want to save some of the. Uh, cooling I put in there because I added a water wetter to it and I don't have any more. So I'm going to save some of this cooling so I can put it back in. Boy, if you don't get... <laughs> take off a few things. Um, I had to take off my dump tube to get this in here. But uh, pretty much I kind of can visualize how it's going to sit. The only difference is it's pretty much going to sit just like about like this. It's going to be more forward um, because it's going to be cut and it's going to be sitting probably about maybe two, three inches forward from where it's at now. Um, and then I have to put the fan on there and mock that up too. So, measure twice, cut once, or turn your savage up. You know what I'm saying? Just start hacking. Not Trey B. Dibbin, Trey B. Savage. Trey B. Cutting. Alright, so as you can see, I got that joint. In it, bruh. So basically, what I had to do was this little part here actually holds the um, the hood latch. Now, it normally it has one on the left, one on the right, and then one on the bottom. But because of how much I had to cut it, the bottom one is now going to be gone. So, but it'll still mount to the top two. Um, my plan is to put something in between here where I cut and the actual radiator, probably like some rubber. Um, so basically that this had this is supported by that beam. So I'm basically gonna replace that beam with the radiator itself, but I'm gonna put some rubber here so that it actually uh not scratching the radiator and then I don't slam my hood anyway, but you know when I close the hood it's 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 kinda gonna be resting on the uh, radiator. So as far as what I had to do, um this particular tuck radiator comes with tabs um, on the left and the right. Actually, I don't know if you can see it on camera. But I just use these, uh, I have these uh, these dr special drill bits that let you um, make your hole. Make, they let you make a threaded hole. Um, it's pretty neat. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, not, you don't necessarily have to use this. You can kind of just drill the hole and use a nut and a bolt. Um, but that's just the way I did it. So it actually has threads. I think it's a little more secure that way. Um, but yeah, with that being said, um, also to the actual hood latch, because I'm not using that bottom piece, um, I actually uh, grinded this off as well and, and made it flush because that when I put this back on here, if I would have left that, it would have been hitting the radiator. So what I did was I just grinded this all the way down. So along with that, and drilling the holes that's pretty much what i had to do oh and of course cutting this middle support here right here um but that's pretty much what i had to do to make it fit it's going to be a case by case basis uh if you have a prelude this is pretty much exactly what you're going to have to do if you have a different car then obviously it's probably going to be different altogether. but this is basically basically with most hondas this is what you're going to have to do somewhat so now i'm pretty much putting everything back together to make sure the intercooler fits and uh yeah move on to the next step so basically, in order to even test fit the fans, I had to uh, take off the wastegate, the dump tube, and I also had to take off the first charge pipe that goes from the turbo to the first piece of intercooler piping to even get it down there. So now that I got all out of the way, um, let's go ahead. 
here to test fit this joint. So a good way to test if your um, fan is working, there's actually a relay in your fuse box. Um, it says cooling fan relay. If you look on your box, on your fuse box under the hood, you'll see that. Um, looks some, something like this. The relay is meant to turn on when the computer tells it to. Uh, you can take this out. Some kind of bug was on the camera, that's crazy. You can take this out. Get you a wire just real quick if you want to test it. I made this little thing. Uh, it's hard to, it's not focusing. But I made this little wire um, thing to test the relay because I have issues with my, well, I've had issues with my fans in the past. So I kind of made this little thing just to test it. So yeah, you want to make sure that you wire it up the right way. Make sure the polarity, a lot of fans are push and pull fans so you want to make sure that if the fans are on the inside that they're pulling and if the fans are on the outside that they're pushing so um, basically if you get the wiring wrong you just kind of reverse the wiring and that's pretty much it now that I know it's they're both working and they're both pulling in the right direction unplug that put my relay back and uh, I do still have to put the um, wastegate on but I'm not gonna bother showing that and then once I put the wastegate back on, should be ready. Man, my bay is dumb dirty. It ain't make no sense. So, after all that tinkering around, finally got the fan shroud on with the fans. And uh, I will say, looks mighty clean, mighty tucked, and I like it. Better than that, since the last clip, I've already taken it for its first test drive. It got, got late last night and I couldn't really record. I will say this. I just have one more thing to say. My prelude curse is officially gone. Yeah. No more overheating. It's driving good. Well, decent. I do still need to get tuned. Uh, for those of you, I don't know if I said it in any of the previous videos or not. The main reason why my car was overheating in the first place was the tune. I don't know if it was too aggressive or uh, a lot of people said that maybe he didn't set the timing before he did with the little the light, um, with the gun light. Whatever the case may be, I'm glad that I got it back not overheating. And I bought some, I guess you could say, unnecessary parts to fix it. But I do like this tuck radiator setup. It is very clean. And I was having minor issues with overheating on really hot days. I'm gonna assume that that's gonna fix that issue. So I am supposed to get tuned uh, in about, what's well, at the end of the month? End of like October 23rd, I think is when I get tuned. So uh, be looking forward for that. I'm going E85, you know what I'm saying? I uh, have a few other upgrades before then too. But, um. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button. And uh, if you're interested in getting a tuck radiator set up like I have, I'll have a link in the description below. Um, I may or may not have a discount code for you guys, so I guess you'll just have to check the description and see. Um, other than that, man, you see that right there? Yeah, that's the subscribe button, man. Click that, and uh, I'll see y'all on the next video. The grand opening. I come through and start smoking shit. I'm creeping up while I'm approaching you.